The following chapter, or rather part of a chapter, is from the book Ulster's White Negroes, From Civil Rights to Insurrection, by Finbarra Doherty. The Homeless Revolt. On a cold February day in 1968, four women and two men sat in the Corporation Housing Department reception. They were discussing the overall housing situation in the city, in particular the plight of the four women present, all of whom lived in flats at Limavadi Road. Within the previous few days, their landlord had cut off their electricity and they were forced to live in candlelit rooms and cook on open fires. Their family doctors were concerned of the potential dangers inherent in such intimidatory practices, and all those involved therefore hoped for positive action from the local city council. This was the beginning of the Derry Housing Action Committee, which grew dramatically from that small group of people which included Mrs McNamee and her friends Mrs Dillon, Mrs Alfreti and Mrs Quigley, all with young families. The two young men were Danny the Red McGinley and an English-born McGee University College lecturer, Stuart Crean, PhD, a member of the Socialist Labour League, later to become the Workers' Revolutionary Party in London. The title of that book should give you a very good idea of how the Irish were viewed in parts of Ulster society in the late 60s, which was hardly a new phenomenon either. Since partition, they had become steadily more and more reduced in circumstances. To obtain any jobs of worth, you had to be a Protestant, you had to be an Orangeman. This worked eventually against both Protestants and Catholics, as it destroyed the cohesion of the society. And by the time the mid-60s rolled around, the situation had become virtually untenable. This led to the de- creation of NICRA, the Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association. I shall be discussing this further in a moment. By the time the 1960s rolled around, people of the nationalist community were, shall we say, tired of the Special Powers Act, locally known as the Flogging Act, which should give you a good idea of the wonders of that act. It was often used to scoop people up or arrest them over the most trivial charges, and it produced a generation of hate and bitterness. By this point, radicals in the nationalist community were no longer satisfied with simply voting for the same old nationalist parties or doing as little as possible to free themselves. This led to street demonstrations and it led inevitably to violence. This is the result of a society in which inequality becomes a keystone of that society and is enshrined within it. It should be noted in fairness that NICRA as originally formed contained a certain measure of more liberal unionists who were concerned at the way society was evolving in the North and who wished to institute reforms. However, due to the highly divisive nature of the society, they dropped out sooner or later. It has been asserted that NICRA was essentially a cover organisation for republicanism and the IRA. There is some truth in this, I won't deny it. But however... I would argue against this, what can you expect in a society such as Northern Ireland when you bar people's rights to use the normal means of protest and reduce them to being virtually ghettoized, they will eventually show their means of protest in some other way. They will have a rising, a revolution, there will be street violence, it is inevitable. You cannot create a society in which gerrymandering and exclusion from jobs and education was the norm without this happening. 